so uh, this morning let's turn to uh, philippians chapter 2 <clears throat> philippians chapter 2 verses 12 to 18 i will read it's a like all other passages in the bible this is also a wonderful passage philippians chapter 2 verses 12 to 18 <clears throat> therefore my dear friends just as you have always obeyed so now not only in my presence but even more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is god who is working in you both to will and to work according to his good purpose do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you may be blameless and pure children of god who are faultless in a crooked and perverted generation among whom you shine like stars in the world by holding firm to the word of life then i can boast in the day of christ that i didn't run or labor for nothing but even if i am poured out as a drink offering on the sacrificial service of your faith i am glad and rejoice i am glad and rejoice with all of you in the same way you should also be glad and rejoice with me so <clears throat> it's a the title of this morning's message is you know taken from verse 13 some bibles it says god who works in you and in my bible it says god who is working in you uh, this doesn't need to be any explanation the god of heaven and earth is working in you and that's a privilege that we have here you know as christians we have come here that we realize you know how great that just that word is to even like to say that to even think about that the god of heaven and the earth is working in us and many times you know we think like oh no how can god work in me and all that you know but because you believe in jesus christ and you have confessed that jesus christ is lord and savior of your life and that you have repented from your old life and then you have turned to jesus christ jesus christ comes and lives in you god who is working in you it the bible doesn't say god who is just standing there in you god is what is doing it's a it's an action verb right it's working god is doing something in each one of us and that is what we want to see today you know how god works in us the greek word for work is energio from we where we get the word energy and you know what is energy so basically god is providing energy in you so that's what it means so god who's energizing you and that is this what this word very clearly says so what is god doing in me why is god doing in me how can i allow god to work more in me is what we are going to see today okay from this passage that we read from 12 to 18 so how is god working in me what does he want me to do how can i enable him to work to fulfill that purpose in me but the truth is that we have to remember is that god is working in me many times you know this is one of the first thing that we forget that god is working in me and many times you know we want to be uh, we forget that you know in my life i have forgotten that many times like it is me who is working i have to accomplish this i have to get to this place i have to achieve this in life i have to get this target i have to reach this place i have to finish this education and i have to do this you know so it's like this heavy burden that we all carry on ourselves it's because that we think that i am working on my life maybe we were working on our life before we came to christ but the reality is the truth is that i have tried come to christ it is who working in me god who's working in me there are many passages that i can give today you know that talks about this energy of jesus the energy of jesus that is working in us and you know we don't have time maybe another day but today that this truth i pray that it will be remaining in our hearts that it is god who is working in me that god who is working in each one of us you know even in first corinthians chapter 12 you know i'm sorry i didn't give that verse to them but um, <clears throat> in the first corinthians chapter 12 it talks about the gifts of the spirit right and even there in first corinthians chapter 12 verse 6 you know it says and there are different activities but the same god 
produces each gift in each person okay so he is working in each one of us you know that he is producing each gift in each person so there's a god who's working in each one of us so it is not say god is working in a group of people it is each person individually it is mentioned that god is working in each one of you and that's the truth you know if the bible says if god says and there are many other verses which i probably can give you a reference later that how god is working in each one of us and so today morning you know you might ask okay praise the lord god is working in me oh what a great truth but what is he working towards what is he trying to do what is god trying to do with my life that's the big question that we all have because like you know just like you know small things in our life i mean for for some of us it can be big like you know where to go uh what job to take which course to take um what house to take and like you know there are many questions you know how will my children be and like you know what course should i put my children in and like you know what how am i going to pay my fees next month in you know, all these things you know we all have this questions you know that 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 makes us feel like you know oh man it's so confusing it's so confusing that life is so confusing it's like you know i don't know whether i'm taking the right step many times there's confusion on one side another side there's fear fear oh did i take the wrong right wrong step oh should i rewind back should i oh did i marry the wrong person or did i will i marry the wrong person oh i i hear you hear some news from your friends and something and you get even more filled with fear like oh man what about my life what about my children what about my career and then you know there are sometimes confusing things you know you've taken a decision and then you start to regret like okay did i take the right decision oh i don't know what is happening so this pressure that's why jesus says you know come to me all you are weary and heavily laden that means like you know this pressure that we put on ourselves or we allow other people to create on us life means everybody should talk well about me everybody should say oh okay okay he married the right person oh he got into the right job oh he's got the right salary oh look at him okay he settled so basically my expectations on myself and others expectations on myself puts me under a lot of pressure and then what happens we forget that god who's working in us and then it's i who oh, it all comes down to me it boils down to my decision oh my life is all about me my life is all about the decisions that i have taken yes god gives us human responsibility but there is also god's sovereignty you know god's power you know so that's what we are going to see first right so what is god intend for us you know what is he doing yes brother you are saying god is working what is he up to what's the purpose okay we see here in verse 13 for it is god who's working in you both to will and to work according to his good purpose okay so that is the most important thing you are circle that word his good purpose whose purpose god's purpose how is that purpose it is good so two things right it is it's a good purpose and it is god's purpose so what is god working towards so what is god working in my life towards his good purpose okay so it is good and it is his purpose okay so it's it's oh so much of pressure ah you can take a deep breath okay so it is not pressure on me it is not my purpose it is not a bad purpose because many people say oh it is my purpose oh i i have worked hard i have achieved this i have got this i have got to get this decision right if i don't get this right my life is gone or sometimes people will say oh i don't know whether god is good or not you know you know about john the baptist you know how powerfully he witnessed for god's name he was the messenger sent by god himself to proclaim the ways of jesus and jesus went on to say out of all the people who are born of women he was the greatest there's like nobody greater than john the baptist you may think oh wow man nice nice testify that jesus gives god amazing testimony about john the baptist greatest to be born of women and uh, he was a prophet he's greater than a prophet jesus says and you know one day what happens you know he is put into a prison 
he is put into a prison and then his whole life purpose what to announce that jesus son of man will come he will basically he is like the guest who welcomes the jesus you know welcomes the messiah so he said okay the dove came upon jesus so he is the messiah so he said all this he boldly said that he boldly proclaimed that jesus is messiah now suddenly he finds himself in prison herod puts him in prison and in prison he starts to get doubts he starts to get confusion i mean who is this john the baptist i mean like the greatest to be born of women and he starts to get doubt uh, matthew chapter <clears throat> yeah chapter 11 <clears throat> in verse 3 he's in prison and then he's asking jesus you know he's sending a message to jesus he's he's got these two questions he's got two questions for jesus he says are you the one who is to come should we expect someone else <laughs> so suddenly you see like this great man of god filled with doubt sitting in a prison obviously you know he's done he's been faithful to what god has called him he's done everything that he should do but what's happening here suddenly doubt start to come confusion starts to come did i do the wrong thing did i give a wrong message did i preach the wrong gospel did i tell did i point to the wrong man and you know he's he's confused he's filled with doubt this great man of god and then jesus replies jesus replies through one of his disciples he says go and report to john what you hear and see the blind receive sight the lame walk the lep the lepers are leprosy is cleansed the deaf hear the dead are raised the poor are told the gospel and blessed is the one who isn't offended by me jesus says hey look at the work of the father see what god's doing see god god is working and so i hope that answered the questions of john the baptist and i hope it cleared the doubt of john the baptist you know why i am saying that many times we don't know what is going on in our life many times we don't know and god intends it to be like that god intends it to be like that you know the bible says it's good purpose it is his purpose in ephesians chapter 1 no ephesians chapter 1 <clears throat> verse 11 Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 In him in Christ we have also received an inheritance because we were predestined according to the plan of the one who works out everything in agreement with the purpose of his will So what's happening in this verse It is everything that's happening in my life is in agreement according to God's will If we are a child of God If you are a child of God when we become the child of God everything in my life is happening is working out is what in agreement with the purpose of his will everything is happening according to God's will okay that is something we should take confidence in that whatever it is God is working in me and through me and he will uh, fulfill his purpose for me so this is a christian's hope and confidence that my life is already planned it's already mapped out it is already predestined and planned and finalized signed and sealed everything is done everything is done about my life god knows where i will live god knows how i will live god knows where i'll go god knows everything about my life god can see the end from the beginning there's no concept of time for god okay so everything is fine done done and dusted So now you might ask brother <laughs> so what is the point what is my plan what is my obedience like what is the thing that i should do now okay you are saying that everything is working out you know in philippians chapter 2 everything is worked out god is working in me to fulfill that mission which is already planned but has he revealed no so how do we discover we discover it by faith like couple of weeks back i mean 3 weeks uh, yeah couple of weeks back i spoke about taking one step at a time god we will not receive instructions for step 2 until we complete step 1 and we will not understand what is step 3 till we come there okay this is you know i found this in my house so use it as an example you know it's it's kind of like you know it's, uh, it's uh, can you see you know what is this what are this it's puzzles you know it's puzzles like you know it's probably got like 200 pieces of puzzles when you start to put a puzzle together 
you know, you can see the final picture, right? Because it's in the board, it's, the picture is there. But when you start to put it, will you like easily put it, especially when there are 200, 300 pieces like this? Can we? We cannot. I mean, like, we'll be like, lot of confusion will be there. Lot of fear will be there. Oh, should it go here? You will even get into fight with your partner. Like, no, 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 it should go here. No, no, no. Partner say, no, 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 this one should go here. You will all trying to figure out the first step. The first step will fit, itself is a big problem, big confusion, lot of fear involved in that. And so, it takes slowly, you know, it takes shape. Slowly but surely, what you're doing, you're starting, the pieces are starting to fall in place. And you're slowly starting to see where things fit. And maybe if you put something in the wrong place, now you figure out, oh, no, no, this is in the wrong place, I should have put it there. And you take it out and you put it in somewhere, someplace else. And then, and then you keep on going, keep on going. The first 100 pieces will have taken 5 hours. But the last 50 pieces will take how much? It'll take probably 10-15 minutes because now you know, oh this, okay it goes there, oh okay yeah, it goes there, ah, this goes here, it fits here. That's the way it is with our life. It's like, you know, we don't understand, practically we don't understand what is God trying to do with my life? How is he planning this? What is he even intending to do with my life? And that's the thing that we have to understand that this, this is the thing of faith that we discover by faith. We discover it by faith. God's not saying, okay, this is how it's going to be. But God says, no, one piece at a time. I'm going to do, your, do my work one piece at a time because I know the end. I know the full picture, but I'm going to do one piece at a time. But we don't like it. We want to know the whole picture. Lord, tell me, 10 standard what I will do. Do you see what I will do? Where will I get job? How much salary will I get? Which, job, where, which house I will go? Where I will go? When will I have children? Lord, tell me, Lord. Please prophesy to me, Lord. But God, many times, doesn't intend to do it that way. And we are very impatient. You know, with our own life, we are impatient with people around us. It's because we want to know the full picture. And someone is ready to tell you, you go and listen to them. Please don't do that. But what I'm saying is that, that it is God's purpose. And the moment you realize that, you know, as you grow older, you know, you can see the hand of God when you look back. Like in Psalm 143, the psalmist says, Lord, I look back at your hand, you know, the hands that worked. Your work of your hands, it says, the work of God's hands. When we look back at the work of God's hands, we see the beautiful picture, how the puzzle is falling into place. And as we grow older and older, we see the faithfulness of God. And that's why I tell always young people, like, you know, this is a, especially when you're in 20s. It's a time of rapid change. Your body is changing, your life is changing, your education is changing. Many things are happening in you. And that, you know, the best thing is to trust in the Lord, you know, during those times of instability. The times when things you don't know how they are going and what's happening and what's happening around you. It's confusing, brother. Oh, brother, it's so fearful. Oh, should I take this step? Should I do this? I don't know. So now today, what is God's plan? As God is working, how should I res our response be? Is what we are going to see today in this passage. As God, like we already established, that God is working in you. Each one of you, God is working in you. Yes, you could say, brother, I've been struggling with this sin. I'm a Christian, I'm struggling with this sin. But when you trust in the Lord, when you turn back to him, God can use that sin, you know, for his purpose. I'm not saying you can go ahead and sin all you want, so God will use that purpose. No, we are dead to sin. But if you are in a position today where you have fallen into sin, where you have taken away, taken steps away from God, where you have gone back, you know, from the, the faith has gone down. Like Jesus said, oh, you of little faith. There was a time where you had a greater faith in God, but now the faith has gone down. Maybe because you are watching the world. Maybe we are seeing the people around the world and you are seeing, you are leaving. Oh, am I missing something? Did I take the right decision? What is it going on? I don't know. And you are trying to compare yourself with the people around you, your friends and, and social media and all these things that's bombarding your brain. And you get restless. And you're seeking, you're clutching for peace. Oh, where can I get this peace? Oh, my life doesn't make sense. It's so confusing. There's one piece here, one piece there, all scattered. I, I don't know. Even I can't figure this out. Yes, we can't figure it out. The Bible says that, that he, it is for his good pleasure. I mean, in my life, I had to come to a place where I had to agree, Lord, yes, I am created by you and I am created for your good pleasure. 
that's all <laughs> the the moment i came to that understanding then i understood oh my life made sense then oh then why oh why am i here on this earth what is the point of my life why am i here what is the point of my job what is the point of having a family what is the point of getting married and everything made sense once i able to understand that i am created i am not a machine that i am created and the second thing is that i am created for his purpose his pleasure his pleasure god we are created for god's pleasure i mean maybe you don't like it but he is the potter we are the clay and that's the thing so so that the, the two core questions that we are created that we are created for his pleasure get that done in your life get that nailed down that that be the foundation of your life jesus christ is the foundation of our life then your life is set everything else will fall in place all the pieces of the puzzle will fall in place but the moment we think oh, i am a machine other people are a machine i should treat them like a machine other people are like you know i have to manipulate them i have to change them i have to uh, tell them like this i have to point out their mistake i have to do this and do that we forget that there's a god who's created them also they are also immortal beings created by god that their soul will live forever with god and everybody you see face to face in your life every day everybody that you met they are all immortal beings <laughs> that's pretty scary right cs lewis writes in one of his books that everybody you fight with everybody you argue with everybody you live with everybody you work with everybody is an immortal being and the moment we see everybody as an immortal being our mindset changes oh wow god is working in that person god is working in me god is working in that brother god is working in that sister and that's everything makes sense now the question is what is god up to you know what does he want to do you know with that you know it's two things that we see in verse <coughs> 14 do everything without grumbling do everything without arguing you know I, i think there are other words you know that are used in other bibles but there are something you know so once you once you understand once you understand that god is working in me and he's got already got the final plan approved and sealed and signed now it's all about me discovering by faith and moving forward by faith by what god has already planned for me right it's a good purpose now so the pressure is off me the pressure is off my back the only thing god expects is faith the righteous shall live by faith and we don't draw back as 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 hebrews chapter 10 it says you know the righteous shall live by faith god is not pleased with the people who draw back like take a step back god is pleased with the people who take a step forward by faith god is pleased with those kind of people so so what's happening lord i'm going to move forward by faith the the decision i'm going to take it could be my job my house my marriage or anything lord i'm going to move forward with faith because we don't know we don't know but god has filled us with wisdom we take wise decisions we take godly decisions we take godly counsel and we take the decision we are not struggling to oh i don't know i don't know whether whether this is right or wrong brother what will other people talk about me today the problem is many people are filled with fear is because of what will other people tell about them basically they are allowing other people to live the, dictate their life it's almost like you know it is going to a point where because of this age of social media it's like you know it's like i am living for other people other people have to comment on me other people have to give their approval oh shabash you did a great job shabash you what a good life you have no it is god who has to say that you yes in my eyes you are pleased it not other people yes there is a desire that we have to do well that we have to have a good life and all that but not above god i mean uh, when if i'm trying to be a people person who pleases the approval of god, people people pleaser and gaining approval of man i cannot be a servant of god i am a servant of who that person who i am wanting approval and that's what happens many times you know that's when these things happen grumbling arguing no no go back grumbling and arguing happens is because we have not figured out that god is working in me and he's got a plan for me and he's doing things and he will do it his timing is perfect like i told you a couple of weeks back his timing is perfect like philip comes by one road and the ethiopian comes by one road they meet at the exact time not even one second ahead one second late god's timing is impeccable amazing timing okay and so when i know god's timing is perfect 
all i have to do lord i submit to you i yield my spirit to you i want to walk in obedience with you i want to live by faith i don't want to trust my eyes i don't want to trust my ears i don't want to trust my five senses i want to walk in you because many times why grumbling happens why did it happen in first corinthians chapter 10 verse 10 it says they grumbled and the lord had to destroy many people in the wilderness because they grumbled they grumbled why did they grumble because they couldn't get the god's plan for them they thought god is a bad god they thought god you know we had a such a good life you know we had very good meat you know, fruits and everything you know in in egypt and god promised us you know land flowing with milk and honey and here we are stuck unable to get even one day's food we have to trust god for even that day's food because next day morning manna will come and then they have to eat so they started to grumble they started to grumble because there's no meat they started to grumble because there's no water they started to grumble because because um, you know um, uh, only moses and aaron was the leader oh i want to be a leader i want to lead i want to be exalted why should god exalt only moses and aaron and started to grumble and so these things happen in our life you know when we become grumblers and we become arguers you know arguing about everything god will tell something through his word and we'll, we we will not fight back with god but we'll say lord no lord that's not for me that's not for me and so we have to understand that you know when god is working in you what a great and awesome privilege it is that he wants to take away my confusion he wants to take away my take away my fear he wants to clean me up and he wants to do all these things so that's why you know it's one of the one of the most um wretched things we can do is to compare ourselves to other people compare ourselves you know you could be a group of people in our church and then comparing ourselves to other person's life it is very unfair to god actually it's like you know god cares for each one of his children cast all your cares on him because he cares for you and so when god cares for you when we start to look at the other person oh look at what he has achieved look at what she has achieved oh look at how nice she is living and all that it is being very very sad in the father's heart when when my children like you know like like uh, <laughs> i don't tell the name we have three kids and like you know they start to compare like you know oh you are doing to him like that you are doing to her like this and all it makes us very sad to hear that from our children because in our eyes all three children are the same but when the children say oh lord you have not um, dad you have not given me you are so very partial to him you are partial to her it makes the parents very sad and then when we start to compare in this age of social media when it's so easy to compare everybody's life every very easy to post pictures of how great you are how awesome you are how uh, how amazing you are it immediately that the spirit of comparison starts to come in us and then when we compare and then we forget that god is working we start to think oh okay oh because i made that decision i am stuck here god is taken out of the picture because i am comparing myself with other people and that's one of the hardest things you know that's when we start to grumble oh man how long lord how much more lord why lord when lord how lord and all these questions start to come upon our life and our hearts you know then filled with more confusion and just just going through going through tough time after tough time so now what god wants us to do so you might ask brother so how can i navigate this knowing that god is working in my life that that god is working in my life knowing that how can i how can i know that god's working in my life you know that's by faith i already told you so what's my part brother what can i do what can i do no, but before that you know these four things you know but let's look at verse 2 and 3 same philippians chapter 2 verse 3 and 2 and 3 make my joy complete by thinking the same way having having the same love united in spirit intent on one purpose do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit but in humility consider others as more important than yourselves so it's a very very important passage for the children in the kingdom of god that in humility consider others as more important than yourself so life is not about me i am not the center of the universe the whole world doesn't revolve around me okay in humility consider others as uh, 
better than yourselves. It could be your wife, it could be your husband, it could be your children, it could be anybody. Just let's listen to them. Let's stop and listen to them. Let's understand them. Let's understand why they say what they say. And that's the thing. Many times, you know, we don't understand. We don't have that tree because like, oh, I'm so, oh, I'm in this treadmill. The treadmill only go from five to six to seven. The speed is only increasing. And you're running and running, running on the treadmill, which never stops. And there's no rest. It is, it's a race, brother. It's a race, brother. With me and my cousins, with, with, with we and my family members, it's a race. You know what they told us. You know how they insulted us. And so my life is just, every day I wake up, I wake up with that words they told me. You are killing yourself. You are killing yourself if you are living for, to show people how great you are. No, it is God who is working in you. It was God who is working in you. God is energizing you. Not to make you great in the other people's sight, but to make you great in his sight. And that is the purpose and when, when those things, you know, we understand that, that humility is that, okay, that person is better than me. It's okay. It is okay. That everyone should not, in the verse 4 also, everyone should not look at only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Especially husband and wife, you know, when it comes, you know, it's like, you know, oh, I have made the decision, you better agree with me, because it's my interest only. And... The Bible says, no, it is interest of others also. Hey, there is, a, there is an immortal soul who is there, right there in front of you. And they have a desire, they have a family, they have some things, you know, they want to do certain things. It's not about me. So the humility to know that life is not about me. The humility to know that I am not the greatest. That's why Jesus kept on saying, you know, if you lose your life, you will find it. You will, you will humble yourself, you will be exalted. And the humbling could take many years. It could take 10 years or 15 years. I don't know. But that's what God wants to do. He wants to accomplish something in our life. And the humility, you know, that comes from God. And then Paul goes on to write verses 5 to 11. You can go home and read. He gives the example of Jesus for humility. Verses 2 to 4, he talks about be humble. Be humble, you know. And then he gives the greatest example of humility, which is Jesus Christ, his life on this earth and on the cross. He gives in 5 to 11 he covers. And then we come back to this normal passage. So he takes a break. He says, okay, let's, let's talk about Jesus now. Okay, let's come back to you now. The first thing is, I want to talk about humility. And then I want to give you this amazing example of humility. Who is Jesus? Who, who, who took the form of a servant. Taking the likeness of humanity. I love that word. He took the likeness of humanity. That means he became like you and me. He became like you and me. He struggled like you and me. When I say struggle, not in the flesh, but you know, he struggled. That means the daily pains and not being able to lay his head on the, uh, uh, being able to lay his head somewhere and struggling, running away from people, you know, the Pharisees chasing him across the temple court, all these things. And running off the cliff, you know, where people were about to throw him off the cliff. Facing the struggles of the humanity. Humbled himself. You know, he was like the likeness of humanity. He humbled himself by being obedient to the point of death, to the death on the cross. So, what a great picture of humility. I mean, if we Christians don't understand humility, it also means we don't understand Jesus. It's basically what, kind of like what indirectly Paul is saying. That, I mean, hey, I'm not telling you to be humble. I'm not, it's not a command to be humble. I'm telling you that Jesus was humble. And if my savior is humble, why can't I be humble? And when he energizes me, when he's working in me with the spirit of humility. You know, many times, you know, humility is not outward. Like, you know, it's not, oh, okay, oh, what, look at how humble he is, how humble he talks, and how humble he walks, and he, you know, how he uh, respects in his talk and all. Many times, humility is in the heart. That's why the Bible says the humility of heart. The humility of heart. Uh, four or five times it mentions in the New Testament. The humility of heart. It is something that's not visible outside. We cannot see that. Only the person, only I can know whether I'm humble or not. Only I can know whether I'm humble based on my thinking towards anybody else in this room or anybody in my office. Only I can know that. You know, because I can talk very sweet words, you know, to my colleague and I can really be proud in my heart. So, so the first thing is that God is working in you and you know how? That he wants us to be humble in our heart. 
especially like judging other people oh that girl oh that boy oh he is like this oh he is like oh he is gone case there's no humility in that quick judgment snap judgments and all that okay then two more things you know three more things and then the second thing is <coughs> was come back to verse 14 so that you may be blameless and innocent children of god who are faultless in a crooked and perverted generation this next thing is what innocent blameless and innocent actually the word for innocent is unmixed some bibles it says pure instead of innocent okay so it is unmixed unadulterated like you know when you have milk then they add lot of water to it it is mixed it's mixed with water and the milk has been mixed and the quality has gone down so here it says you know you be innocent because god's working in you it's okay you be innocent you know there is this verse in romans chapter 16 verse 19 romans chapter 16 verse 19 the same word is being used the word innocent is being used there yeah verse 19 the towards the end therefore i rejoice over you about what is good and yet innocent about what is evil be infants almost like you know be infants to what is evil innocent in evil things such innocence that you don't know there is an evil that exists so children of god romans chapter 16 verse 19 towards the end so innocence towards evil innocent towards evil today there are so many things that are happening in this world that makes us aware of evil we are playing with evil we are playing with evil things we are watching evil things but the bible says stay away from that don't corrupt your mind don't corrupt your heart there are some things when you are watching when you are 15 years old you know you could be 30 35 years old that is still corrupting you so the bible says why do you want to go there and corrupt yourself corrupt your heart and mind and soul and then live with that damage ever after watching certain type of movies you know going to certain type of websites you know do, listening to certain type of things reading certain type of books reading certain type of magazines that corrupt our soul that corrupt our mind and here the bible says you know no no you are a child of god you stay innocent to evil things many times there is an attraction of human nature to evil like you know people like horror movies people like you know like murder stories people like accidents oh i want to watch oh look at that oh how he got killed oh look at that oh blood is flowing <laughs> all that oh look at him taking revenge there's an attraction to evil in human nature but as children of god the bible says no no be innocent don't mix don't mix your life with evil be innocent from evil and that's what the bible says that god is working in you so you are you are staying away from evil it's not that you can't you know god god's given you a free will you can go do what you want you can watch what you want you know you go on netflix you go on um, any streaming platform you can go to any website but the bible says no no don't go, stay, be innocent to evil when people come and fr- friends come and talk to you about evil stuff oh yeah yeah i've seen that oh that movie oh yeah i've seen that no i want to stay away from certain things i want to stay away from certain type of people who corrupt my heart and that's the thing you know that that paul's writing that we become blameless and pure children of god who are faultless in a crooked and perverted generation it's a perverted generation we live in a evil generation jesus used to talk i think four or five times in his in his life he he talked about look at this evil generation this evil generation this perverted generation the crooked generation that jesus said what is crooked their life is always crooked they are always trying to find a crooked path to something and this world is filled with those people because when we don't know when we are not a child of god we we are also crooked we are also perverted but here it says children of god who are faultless in a crooked and perverted generation children of god in a crooked and a, and in a perverted generation and that's the thing you know be innocent towards evil be infants towards evil things and you don't want to go to certain places you want to don't want to go to certain places you know there was time in my college days there was on the weekends uh, friends used to go to certain places and you know i can tell you i was i was not a perfect person even when i was in college but there are certain places that my friends used to invite i didn't want to go i thank god for the grace of god working in me to say no to that there was heavy temptation because all my friends used to say hey what is this hey chill man let's go there what's there 
but i didn't want to go i thank god by god's grace i didn't go to those places because i was able to maintain my innocence in that matter again i'm telling you it's not because of me but it was god who was working in me and many every good thing that we do it is because of god who's working in us don't let's not take credit let's not become boastful saying oh yeah i am working look at my christian life no it is god who's working in you and that's the thing we have to we forget many times oh that guy that guy is a good christian he is a bad christian no it is god who enabled him to be a good christian and the credit goes to god 100% and but yes there is some responsibility on our side we avoid evil stuff you know we stay innocent to evil we want to be humble in our heart looking at our savior jesus christ and the third thing is we are children of god we are not children of darkness in ephesians you know he says you once you were darkness but you now are children of light once you were darkness yes we are well darkness there are still darkness areas in our hearts still even today as we walk in the lord as we walk in his paths you know god shines his light in our hearts and we see there's some darkness and say lord i want to get rid of this darkness through your grace let your grace wash me with your dark with this dark this dark areas of my life and then the final thing is holding fast to the word of life verse 16 by holding fast we can be shine like stars in the world by holding fast to the word of life holding fast to the word of life john chapter 6 verse 68 john chapter 6 verse 68 they were asking who jesus was and simon peter answered verse 68 lord to whom will we go we have the words of eternal life the words of eternal life that is jesus himself so here when it says by holding firm holding fast to the words of eternal life to the word of life that is the logos of zio that means the logos means the word of zio means life the abundant life i want to hold on to jesus he gives me life he gives me abundant life i want to clutch to him i want to cling to him i want to embrace him because you know what he's doing he's working in me he's still working in me to make me what i ought to be what to be he's making is working god is preparing so the whole life i see it as a preparation god god is preparing me in the i could be in the most lowest of moments i could be the i don't have one rupee in my pocket god is preparing me i don't have any good habits in my life right now god could use that when we when i turn to him and he can prepare me some for something great and i could be the most manipulative person god can still work in me your situation today does not determine your destiny your situation today does not because god is working in you if you turn to god you know god wants to start working in you again because only one thing that can stop god is when we are not humble when we are going after evil things and then when we fall away because children of god you know that's not up to us we are children of god but when we are disobedient children of god or when times you know when we don't hold fast to the words of life many times you know we live on just this verse that comes there oh yeah yeah it inspired me oh, okay 10 minutes no but i want to hold on to god i want to hold on to every word that's in his bible that's in his word and then you know you see that god is working in you you see all these things falling into place you see oh now i see why this peace was in my life there was this one year of my life that needs to fall here oh now i understand what is this oh now i understand what is this and then finally you are able to see that through faith you are able to see that oh god is working in me and then when you get little older you know towards the end of your life you see how god has accomplished his purpose so one person's life you know i want to say and close is joseph you know joseph you know he was having a very tough life tough life and then i want you to turn to acts chapter 7 acts chapter 7 verse 9 and 10 acts chapter 7 verses 9 and 10 <clears throat> this is stephen's sermon you know he's talking about the 2000 year history you know that's the thing you know how god can use us you know we, our life is in this world is only 50 60 years but god's plan is 2000 years so within this short message he's covering almost 2000 to 3000 years of time period and in that there's a man who came called joseph and he lived only for a few years and how god used god was working in him how is that the patriarchs verse 9 became jealous of joseph and sold him into egypt but god was with him circle that god was with him god was working in his life god was working through him 
God was using him. He was sitting in this prison and he was pleading his brothers, oh please don't throw me into this, don't throw me into this pit. He's pleading them. God was working with him. God was with him. Even when he was thrown into the prison, he was accused unfairly. God was with him. And he, God rescued him from all his troubles. God gave him favor. God gave him wisdom. God gave, made him king of Egypt. God appointed him ruler over Egypt. God blessed his own old household. God was with him. So let's turn back. We'll read and we'll close today. That God is working in you. Never forget that. Never stray away from that truth. That God is working in you to will and to work according to his good purpose. That is the end of Christian life. That his purpose only will be fulfilled when we allow God to work in our lives. So verse 13, again I'll read. For it is God who is working in you both to will and to work according to his good pleasure. And now let's read verse 12. So work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So it's kind of like sometimes in the Bible verse you have to understand the reason then you come to the final point. So now because God is working in me I can work out my salvation in fear and trembling. Many people they just only read verse 12 and they misrepresent the Bible and misrepresent God. So no, God is, we work out our salvation with fear and trembling because who is at work in me? God who is at work in me to will and to do his good work for his good pleasure. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this amazing work that, we are, that you're doing in each one of us, Lord. Lord, even though we could be insignificant, we could be weak and we can sometimes be foolish, Lord, but you've chosen us. You've chosen us as your dear children. Lord, we've come here, Lord, on a Sunday morning to see your glory, Lord, to see your work, to see your hands, Lord, the work of your hands. We remember and meditate upon the work of your hands, Lord. How beautifully you have done, Lord, certain things. Lord, how confusing that moment was, Lord, many years ago. But today, Lord, we can see clearly. And so, Lord, there are many confusing things even today, Lord. But I know, Lord, in the future, we can see things very clearly. Lord, as you told your servants, Lord, you will not understand now, but you will understand later. Lord, help us to remember that. That there are many things we will not understand now, but we will understand later. Help us to have this patience, Lord, to know and the truth, Lord, that you are working in each one of us. That you are working to will and to work, Lord, to fulfill your good pleasure, Lord. And we want to submit, Lord, today. We want to yield ourselves, Lord, to your good pleasure. Lord, take our life and use it. How you seem fit, Lord. What you want to do. What you, want to, what you, what, what you have planned, Lord. Let it come, Lord. Let it come. Even though it could be hard for certain days. Lord, let it come, Lord. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you take control of our lives. Thank you, Lord, that you're working in each one of us. We go with that confidence today. Bless each dear brother and sister. Especially, Lord, people who are going through tough times, who can't see head or tail, who can't understand what's going on, Lord. I pray, Lord, that your heavenly revelation, Lord, will come upon them and reveal to them the steps of faith that they have to take. Help us, O oh Lord. We commit this time into your hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.